Hi everybody, thanks for stopping by. I got a short video for you here on how sundials work and what they tell us about the flat earth. Now this first one is a horizontal sundial and it's really not obvious the logic behind it, how they determine what angle to put that piece on that cast the shadows or how they position where the hours are. Uh, it's really not clear. This is a side view of the armillary sundial. To set it up, you just raise the arrow up from the horizontal to whatever your latitude is. Second, rotate it from the base so that it points north. Now it should be pointing at the North Star. The last thing is just make sure this, the sides are level and then uh, you should be good to go. It's a wireframe model of the Earth. Uh, the arrow shaft, that's like the axis of the Earth. and the split ring is like the equator. The Earth rotates 15 degrees every hour, so the shadow of the arrow uh, moves accordingly and it tells the hours on the split ring. Note that the range starts from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now this view looks down the axis of the arrow shaft from the side with the head of the arrow. It shows all the critical components. The split ring has the hours on it and it's concentric to the shaft. As the sun moves through the sky, uh, the arrows shown here point in the direction of the shadows, from the shaft to the hours that are on the split ring. The hours are equally spaced 15 degrees apart. The flat earth model puts the sun on a plane parallel to the earth, shown here as the yellow line. There are four times that are seen on sundials that conflict with that model. At 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., the sunlight uh, enters the sundial parallel to this plane. Parallel lines don't intersect, so the sunlight can't be coming from a plane at, at 3,000 miles above the sundial. And the same problem at 5 a.m. and 7 p.m., the sunlight is pointing up at the plane you know, that's like impossible. Where's the sun? Is it like below the earth? It just, it just can't work like this. In summer, the sun is high in the sky and enters the sundial from the north. In winter, the sun is lower in the sky and enters the sundial from the south. On the equinox, the sun stays on a flat plane. The edge is shown here as a black line. This photo, taken around 9 a.m. a few days after the, the equinox, around 10 years ago, shows the shadow from the top edge of the split ring coming to the center of the inside surface where you read the hours. On the equinox, this area was fully covered in shadow all day. This means that it was on the plane described in the previous photo. It never left that plane all day. So, if the sun stays on this plane, and is also on a plane that's said to be 3,000 miles above the flat Earth, it has to be traveling on the intersection of those two planes, which is a straight line. To find this line, I drew an orange line from the east coast of the USA, where I live, to the equator on a flat Earth map. The yellow line, perpendicular to the orange, is the path that the sun takes, according to observations that I took with my sundial and the elevation of the sun as claimed by flat earthers. Now, does the sun travel in a straight line? Well, by flat earth logic, yes. This sketch shows where the flat earth sun would be three hours before noon when the earlier picture was taken. This puts it on the north side of the plane of the sundial, but the picture shows the sun coming in from the south side. So, what, what is the flat earth explanation for this? I'm sure it's just going to be pure insanity. So, what sundials tell us about the flat earth model is, it doesn't hold water. When you try to align it to observed reality, it self-destructs. If the sun is on a plane that's 3,000 miles high, sundials couldn't possibly work. But 
sundials do work. What doesn't work is this ridiculous flat earth model. The more you examine it, the more ways it finds to fail. So, that's, that's about all I got to say right now. So, thanks for watching. It was kind of fun to make, and, uh, and I'll see you next time.